that message that we just heard is called the Easter message. The gospel, the good news. To many here, it's more than the good news. It's the great news. It's the outstanding news. But maybe there's a few here to you. It's the mediocre news. It's the average news. It's the irrelevant news. It's the I don't really get it news. I want to take a couple of minutes to tell you why I believe that it is the greatest news that you'll ever hear. To do that, I need to take you right back to the beginning, to the book of Genesis. It's the first book in the Bible. There you see man walk with this perfect relationship with man and God, God the Creator. It was perfect. Sin had not entered the world. There was no war, no famine, no sickness, no poverty, no shame, no guilt, no police, no ambulances, no locked doors, no need. But humanity turned their back on God and in doing so, sin entered the world. Sin, S-I-N. It's all about that central letter I, I, me, myself, what I want, my needs, my desires. Sin entered the world and that divine connection between humanity and God was broken. There was a barrier, a barricade, a division. We were separated from God. All the way through the Old Testament, you see God's people trying to be back in a relationship with God. Trying to make it right, but they just couldn't do it. There was still this disconnect. But there was some hope because there was this chatter. There was this talk about someone who was going to come. Someone who was going to rescue them. This king. This king who was going to bring salvation and restore everything. But the king they received was not the king that they were expecting. See, they thought they received a king who lead by positional power. But instead they received a king who led by Holy Spirit supernatural power. They thought they received a king who would be served by many. But instead they received a king who served many. They thought they received a king who would have a crown of thorns. So they'd have a gold crown around his head. But instead they received a king who had a crown of thorns. They thought they would receive a king who would live a life and then die and enter the history books. But instead they received a king who lived a life, died, conquered the grave, rose again and changed the history books. the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, fully God and fully human. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, he always will be unmoved, unchanged, undefeated and never undone. The king they received was not the king that they were expecting, but he was so much better. They received Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what happened when he came to earth. He was a game changer. He brought change and transformation. The lost were found, the blind could see, the deaf could hear. Everywhere he went, lives were restored. He went to a wedding that had run out of wine. So he went and got some H2O and made it into a vintage murder. Then he went to a picnic. They had no food. So he got just some loaves of bread and some fish, broke it, blessed it, multiplied it, and everybody was provided for. Then he went to a funeral and everybody was mourning. Jesus walked up with a little bit of a skip and a smile on his face. He said, he's not dead. Arise, come forth. And the dead came to life. You see, Jesus is all about making the old become new. The dead become to life. The ruins become glorious. That is what Jesus does. You see, Jesus wasn't just a nice guy that everyone sort of followed. Like, he was a nice guy, but not everyone liked him. In fact, some people despised him. It was the religious people of the time. They couldn't stand it. You see, Jesus had a message. A message about acceptance, forgiveness and love. Jesus had a message that says, I am the way, the truth and the life. It is through me that you can have a relationship with the Father. What he was saying is that disconnect that happened right in the beginning, that barrier, that division, that separation, I am here to connect you back with your loving Father. But the religious people do not like that. See, in their head it was all about rules and regulations. Do this, and then do this, and then maybe you'll be good enough. They turned to Jesus and they wanted to kill him. See, they're all about behavior. But Jesus stood in front of his people and he said, I am your savior. At that point, they shouted, the religious people shout, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And then as we saw, Jesus was taken and hung on that cross, battered and bruised, ridiculed and mocked. And of all of those people as he hung there, his final three words were this, it is finished. Do you know what those words mean? It means that that disconnect, the separation, the divide is finished. It means that the curtain is torn, which means that you and I today, 
in 2014 can have access to our heavenly loving Father. It is finished. That's what he means. That guilt and shame is finished. It is finished. You see, it is finished. Actually means it has begun. Because the finish is not over. The finish is the start. Of new life. For you and me today, you see, Jesus didn't just die on the cross and then no, he died on the cross, but then rose again on Resurrection Sunday, on Easter Sunday. Today is all about the day that he rose again and had the victory. So we can receive his grace, his mercy, and his love. Easter was the day where Jesus slapped YOLO in the face. <laughs> Wondering what all this was about. It's about one message, and it's a message of grace. It's not a theology, it's not a doctrine, it's not a set of rules. Grace is a person, Jesus Christ. You see, he died on the cross and rose again. So today you can have access to our Father. So you can walk in his likeness, so you can receive his grace. It was for you. Today you can have a relationship with your heavenly Father. I want to tell you a story that's about a father who worked on a bridge. Every day he'd lift the bridge up so that boats could go under. Then they put the bridge down so that trains could go over every day. Boats went under, trains went over. His son Billy had a day of school so he came into work with him. Billy loved football so he was doing some kick-ups. He accidentally kicked the ball onto the track. He ran onto the track and fell. His arm was stuck. He tried to release it but he couldn't. So he shouted, Dad, Dad, I'm stuck. The dad didn't hear him so Billy shouted again, Dad, Dad, I'm stuck. The father saw his son there and just as he was about to go and rescue his son, he realized that the bridge was up and he was faced with the biggest decision of his life. Does he leave the bridge up? The 500 people on the train live and die, but his son lives. Or does he put the bridge down? The 500 people on the train live, but his son dies. He puts the bridge down. The train goes over and his son Billy loses his life. It was in the paper the next day, extra, extra, read all about it. Father sacrifices his son. There was three types of people. One type of person was just too busy, they didn't care, they just wanted to get their Starbucks coffee before work. There was another group of people who heard about it and thanked the Father. You know, there was one, one large group who never even got to hear about the sacrifice the Father made for them. The truth is that the Father represents God. Billy represents Jesus. And the people of the train are the people of this world, you and me. The difference between the story is that Jesus went willing, willingly. Jesus said, Father, I will lay down my life for these people. Billy didn't have a choice, but Jesus did. I don't know where you fit into that train. Whether you've just been too busy to have a relationship with God. Or whether you have thanked the Father and you're in a relationship with Him. Or maybe you're here today and for the very first time you're here. The world that He gave His one and only Son. So that none shall perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Who is the world? The world is you and me. The world is everybody. Not just the goody two shoes. Not just the people who are going to love Jesus back. Everybody. For God so loved the world. White or black, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, Jew or Gentile, no matter who you are today, the cross was for you. The resurrection for you. Grace is for you. We're going to sing this song. It's called Calvary. And this song, the place called Calvary, is where Jesus went to the cross. It's where he died. But in this opportunity, I want you just to think, where are you in your relationship with God? If God is there, why don't you call out to Him and say, God, I want to receive you. Think about your relationship with Him. If someone brought you here today, it's not because they like you. It's because they love you. Because they've received something and they love you enough that they just want you to have the opportunity to receive it for yourself. So why don't we stand to our feet and we're going to sing this song, Calvary. And as we do, we're just going to pray that God moves and reveals Himself to you. The Savior of the Lord, He carried the cross for all of my tears. He paid the cross. Salvation complete.
know those people that to, today that you uh, you prayed that prayer. You know this uh, uh, today's a little bit different to how we would normally do do church. Probably what we would have done is said if you've made that decision, just raise your hand. And someone's going to come to you. They're going to give you a Bible, but we've sort of got to exit out the side doors and that because as you know you're standing in a line in the rain probably there's another group of people waiting to come into the next uh, service so at the end of the end you sort of go to go to the exits and if you made that decision you know um, there's going to be some people at the door they've got a bible it's got, got word on the front it's uh, being put together in a magazine format and uh and, uh, you know, we want to give it to you as a, as a gift. And, you know, you've got a couple of options. You can you can grab that. You can do a runner and think, I'm going to get it, get out of here before they get me. That's okay. That's, that's how I first started going to church. I thought, I'm just going to make sure no one grabs me. And um, But one thing I did do, though, is I just kept coming back. Been coming back for nearly 30 years now. And... Uh, it's amazing what God will do if you just keep coming back. It's amazing what you learn. It's amazing what you get to understand. It's amazing the awesome people you get to meet. It's amazing the strange people you get to meet. Because it's the house of God. And you know, the amazing thing about the house of God is there's nobody excluded. Which means there's all sorts of people. There's people like you and there's people not like you. And Because we don't get to choose who's there. Jesus does. But the good news is, is we all get to be there if we want to part of his house, part of his family. So we just want to say welcome. You're welcome to come back if you're from out of town. Can I encourage you? Find a find a church that's that's talking about Jesus. They're not all the same. Thank God all churches aren't the same. But if they're talking about the resurrected Jesus Christ, it'll be a good church. You'll find your place. So I encourage you to to, um, to do that. Cool? Cool, why don't we once again just put our hands together and just say, uh, well done to all those people that for the rest of us who already know him, Easter's a, a great, I use the term reminder because it's, it's time to focus on, yes, the significance of the cross and yes, the significance of his resurrection and uh, the, those truths and what they mean to us. We get to live 24-7 in those. And today I want to remind you as, you as you go out today, remind you the the power of this song, Calvary, place of death, that's what it means. That that place where Jesus died on that cross for you, three days later, he rose from the dead. That you might have everlasting life that is that is how, how would you say? That's that best way to describe is where, where you actually get to live your life in this relationship with God. This God that Abraham described as the God who could bring the dead back to life and make all things new. This, uh, this invisible God who moves the visible in our lives. We, we, because of Easter, we get to live that 24-7. And I want to encourage you to, to as, you, as you go today, be reminded of what it's about. It's not a once a year event for us. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a state of being now. You and I remember that that, that veil when it tore, it didn't tore from the bottom. Men ripping it apart to try and get into the presence of God because of their effort. It tore from the top to show that all righteousness comes from above, not from our works. Let's be reminded of that. All our guilt, our shame, our condemnation. Hey, he took it all upon himself. So that you and I could walk with a real freedom and a free heart and a clear conscience before our God, knowing that His blessing and His favour is for us in every single aspect of life. I want you to go mindful of that. Come on, can I pray for you? Then we're going to sing and we're going to finish up. Father, I want you to lift your hands towards it. Pray for every single person that's here today. And Lord, may the reality of what Easter is, the significance of the cross, the cross with you on it, but also the cross without you on it, the grave and the empty grave. May the significance of those things just just be just be worked into, just the very the core of every single person in this place. 
and the truth of what those things are about. Bless every single person, I pray today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, hey, what, what we do this is, these guys, third time round today, performing our team. So, come on, why don't we put our hands together and... Uh, here at the uh, Dominion or in Bermondsey. Have a fantastic uh, week. We'll see you just next Sunday. Come on, let's sing this song.